Good evening, Republicans and Independents. <laughs> I've always been a storyteller. Even when I was a little kid. Of course, my parents called that lying. But I was always trying to make life as interesting as the movies. It wasn't until I got older that I realized that life is more interesting than the movies certainly weirder. Yeah. Out of school I talked myself into a, or talked my way into a job at a local TV station as an unpaid intern for the news department, getting lunch and coffee and water and carrying batteries and tripods. And, but it gave me a chance to learn cameras, video recorders, that sort of thing. And I, uh, for my supervisor that I was perfectly willing to work as a replacement cameraman should the opportunity arise and he informed me that that uh, was neither probable nor preferable to the organization. But uh, I persevered and eventually the moon and stars aligned with overlapping vacation schedules and there was an opening. So I was the backup cameraman. The other cameramen were out with uh, reporters doing stories and I was supposed to sit by the police scanner and wait for something horrible to happen. About 4.30 it did. Uh, we got a call over the scanner for uh, a gas explosion of suspicious origin. So I raced to the scene. Lovely little suburban neighborhood lined with every conceivable type of fire apparatus known to man and available in the two county area. The only thing that wasn't there was any kind of smoke or any kind of fire. But being an ambitious young cameraman, I shot everything that moved and a lot of the things that didn't, I shot the lights, I shot the firemen, I shot the fire trucks, I shot the hoses, I shot the hydrant, I shot the house, I shot the street, I shot the street sign. Got an interview with the scene commander and he told me yes, there was a gas explosion. One individual was injured, still trapped inside. Being an ambitious young cameraman, I said, can I go in, sir? He gave me a weird little look and said, sure, go ahead. <laughs> so I go inside, following a line of firemen to uh, the bathroom at the rear of the building. And the rest is what Paul Harvey would call the rest of the story. Yeah. The house belonged to a man named Neil Emerson, not his real name. <laughs> Mr. Emerson was a large man, a man of significant girth, shall we say. He was also a smoker. His wife had tried to keep him from smoking for many years, but all she had done is convince him to hide it better. And his favorite place to sneak a smoke was in the guest bathroom at the back of the house. And that's where he was on this summer Sunday, sneaking a smoke. Went into the bathroom, opened the window, sat down on the bowl, lit up a cigarette, proceeded to drop a couple of kids off at the pool, <laughs> cop a squad, go number two, whatever you prefer. Now what he didn't know was that his wife had just finished cleaning the bathroom. And this time she had started using a new cleaning product after the old one ran out. What she didn't know, had she read the label, she would have known that uh, using that particular cleaning product in conjunction with other cleaning products produces chlorine gas. Now Mr. Emerson's significant girth was sufficient to create a near perfect seal around the top of the bowl. So he wasn't affected by the chlorine gas although it continued to build up underneath him <laughs> along with a significant amount, the fireman said, a significant amount of methane. <laughs> so now at some point, his wife called to him from outside in the garden and fearing that she would see the smoke from his cigarette, Mr. Emerson opened his thighs and tossed the lit cigarette butt into the bowl. The, re 
resulting explosion lifted Mr. Emerson off the ball and through the window. Well, not completely through the window. His left arm and his head went outside. His torso was lodged in the frame and his significant girth was hanging from the wall on the inside of the bathroom. Being an ambitious young cameraman, I shot the bathroom, I shot the cleaning products, I shot the warning label, and I shot his lightly singed giant ass hanging out of the wall. Then I went outside and shot his head, yelling at me to get the fuck off his lawn. Now, I, I, I took the I took the footage back to the TV station, and of course, they didn't use it, <laughs> which I was grateful for. Uh, uh, I got a good lesson on the intersection of ambition and humanity, <laughs> and uh, that was the beginning of the end of my affection for local TV news. But I will say to this day that when somebody talks about the dangers of smoking, I have a completely different image in my mind than anybody else. Thank you very much. <laughs>